Hi everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and I'm here with my co-host Jeff Kelly. This is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous production, two days wall-to-wall -wall coverage of Hadoop's, Hadoop Summit. We're here at the San Jose Convention Center. A um, lot of action going on today, a lot of innovation. Uh, we're hearing some great keynotes. Mohamed El Mala is here. He's the manager of enterprise applications and architecture at Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. We're going to talk about how they are using uh, Hadoop to solve healthcare, healthcare problems. And Mohammed, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It's really a pleasure having you. My pleasure. So, tell us a little bit about uh, the, the hospital. Um, why don't we start there in, in your role? Right, so uh, Children Hospital has been, uh, of Los Angeles, has been around for about 100 years uh, plus. And um, we've implemented our electronic medical record in 2004 for the inpatients. And then uh, we're currently, actually, as we speak, or as I speak, uh, we're on, um, out uh, rolling out the outpatient, so the EMR for our 30 plus uh, clinics. So um, we're motivated, of course, with, uh, with the success that we had with our inpatient EMR and uh, with everything that is happening in the healthcare um, around us. So the EMR is definitely not the only thing in a hospital. There is hundreds of other applications that we maintain and introduce every, uh, you know, couple of weeks there's a new app um, but definitely EMR is the main core piece of, uh, of the hospital operations. Yeah I was to say so the uh, hospital's application portfolios are very diverse. Um, lots of small applications, some very large applications, sure. uh, things you know change quite frequently you guys are regulated in, in, in a number of ways True. Uh, and you're under severe budget constraints. So um, those are some of the drivers. What are the big drivers that lead you to a, to a place like uh, this, this conference, Hadoop Summit, and Hadoop in general? Right, so um, th th there are actually multiples, but the one that um, I was actually speaking about today uh, was related to the uh, research department. So we have uh, the Saban uh, Research Institute, and what the Saban researchers need is continuous access to large amounts of data. Uh, not only our patient data, but also patients from around the, 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 the world. That uh, their data is de-identified, we remove the protected health information from them, and then researchers around the, around the world can, can use these uh, to, to find data sets for their uh, uh, medications, uh, research for uh, trials, and what have you. Um, so they, they have been coming to us for years, you know, to, to get them access to the EMR, to get them access to uh, our data sources. And uh, we've always been um, challenged by the ability to give them um, that access because these systems have uh, accumulated large number of data. And um, they usually need all this data, all this history um, for, again, con uh, continuous amount of time or for a long time. Uh, so it's not something that we can do without putting a lot of serious money in it. When Hadoop came about, or at least uh, when I heard about <laughs> Hadoop um, a year plus ago, um, I was intrigued because I felt that there is a, a, you know, a match between the two. The need from research for this data um, and, as you've mentioned, the limited budget. So instead of, of allocating space on, on SANS that are expensive um, or creating an enterprise data warehouse that like we used to think before, uh, this idea came and says, okay, there's another way, cheaper, and we'll give you what you need. Yeah, when you talk to the original you know, people that developed Hadoop and some of the applications around Hadoop, they always talk about the the container, how much money used to <laughs> go into the box, you know, whether it was a storage array, you mentioned sand. So right. you're saying that the economics of Hadoop really are what uh, attracted you and enabled you to develop these new applications for your research group. True, but not the only um, uh, reason. The definitely the, it actually the good match was al also because the researchers in, in nature, they are, uh, 
data, um, you know, they, they, they are also intrigued about the data. They, they are data scientists by, by default, many of them at mm -hmm. least are. So the, the, uh, they were actually, when I first mentioned the, the Hadoop and the, the idea of having a Hadoop uh, in-house, uh, they were they were really uh, uh, you know amazed. They were they they really thought that this is something that only researcher will thought about. They didn't think that uh, health IT or an enterprise department of the hospital would be also interested in having Hadoop. So uh, once we found the mutual interest, we uh, we we started the application. Do you do you feel like you're unique in that regard? Uh, some <laughs> somebody who brought. Uh, th this innovation to you know the quote unquote line of business. I mean, so often you hear um, you know about IT skeptics. You know, no, we can't do that, and so forth. So, uh, are you unique in that regard, or do you do you think that Hadoop is of the nature that anybody in your position sees the potential? And what are you what are you hearing from your peers? Um, I wouldn't say it, uh, that I'm unique in this. I think there are other hospitals and other care providers mm -hmm. uh, that have actually um, stepped into the plate and, and uh, started uh, with Hadoop uh, before we do. So by, uh, by any means, I don't think we're unique. I think it's just a matter of timing. Some people are already uh, a little bit earlier uh, than others. And it's all about all the other factors that plays in. So you have to be in the right place and the right time. Uh, my moment came you know, a few months ago. Other people uh, uh, actually did it a year ago, and I'm sure other people will follow in the, in the, in the years to come. So Mohammed, you talked about the economic factor in terms of storage and how it's a, it's a sure. Hadoop is a, is a solution that allows you to store large volumes of data at a at a really what is essentially a fraction of the cost that you would you would pay the some some other types of solutions. Um, but I wonder if we could move up the stack a little bit, if you will. So you're obviously storing this data so that you can provide access to it uh, to your researchers. Sure. Um, talk about a little bit about how you do that and the actual applications you're building on top, and then maybe we can go into some of the the real you know, we, we usually say business value, but I guess maybe patient value or research value uh, of the data and how you're getting that value out of out of uh, the data that's stored in Hadoop. Right, so so definitely the, the uh, financial factor and the, the HDFS being uh, uh, relatively uh, cheaper, um, I, I just don't want to dismiss that as the, the only factor. There are definitely other factors, and I started on the note that uh, our researchers are uh, data scientists, or at least uh, they play or put that hat on uh, in many times. So the fact that we give them that platform, uh, that, that again, that was a perfect match for them because they were all the type of developers that they will jump in and use Java or other scripting or open source language to run their uh, uh, patch processing or queries or what have you against the Hadoop cluster directly. They don't need us really to, to, um, to build uh, a whole tier above uh, Hadoop, but nevertheless, we did actually provide them with a simple UI, nothing fancy or complicated, again, do, due to the nature of it. And that UI with a simple HTML uh, page with a little bit of JavaScript that makes web services calls directly to the HDFS. Mm -hmm. So the idea is it's, it's relatively not meant for the our physicians or end users that are not of a technical nature. It was targeting a specific mm -hmm. uh, community which is are the researchers. So it's a little bit dry compared to the EMR or other application mm -hmm. that you will find. So you've got some fairly sophisticated uh, users then it True. sounds like. So uh, tell us about some of the, the problems they're tackling. How are they using the data? What is uh, what, what are the what are the use cases? Right. So the main use case was that they uh, they wanted to they had uh, a grant already secured um, that needed um, them to look at vital signs um, of uh, patients as they are um, inside uh, inpatient or inside the, the the hospital stay in the hospital. So um, it, the, the way that we are doing it now or before actually was that the nurse or the care provider will take a snapshot of the vital signs. So for example, after she administered, the nurse administers the, uh, the medication, uh, she wants to see how that, if, 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 it, if any, affected the blood pressure, for example. So it takes a snapshot of that, and that only snapshot at that moment will go to the EMR. That data is usually very unique. The nurse of nature, they don't have the time to do that a lot. So if they do it three or four times a day, that will be you know, the most that they can afford. Uh, the researcher from from the other side wanted to see a whole history, a continuous curve of the, the blood pressure, for example. 
they go up and down with the sleep, with the medication, so they can find patterns basically mm -hmm. um, that is related or can be correlated to the events that are happening to the patient while in the ho at the hospital, for example, as we mentioned, the medication. So that continuous storage of the data um, with high frequency, because we're not getting this every hour, we're getting it every few seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, couldn't be achieved just with a SQL server, which we, we, we have actually as the first hub to aggregate the data, we put it in a SQL server, and then from the SQL server, we scoop it into uh, HDFS. Mm -hmm. So so this is data that, these vital sign, uh, vital sign data, is this, so this is essentially streaming off machines? Exactly. Um, talk about that a little bit, and the impact uh, that that is going to have on your industry. We were, uh, we brought the cube to, uh, General Electric had an event uh, last week talking about the industrial internet, and one of right. the use cases, of course, is all uh, data generated by um, industrial equipment in the healthcare field, so MRI right. machines, uh, it could be blood pressure, w any number of machines. Um, how do you see that kind of developing and impacting the way you patient, uh, the way doctors, nurses, under clinicians deliver care? So, so there are two pieces to it, or two point of views. The, the one point of view that we're looking at right now and have been describing is the research, mm -hmm. which is to a certain extent you can think of it as after the fact. So uh, uh, the patient most likely will be out of the hospital by the time we look at this data mm -hmm. and analyze it. Um, there is also the dimension of, as you've mentioned, the, 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 the things that we can do with this data on the spot. So I know of uh, companies out there that provide um, some uh, monitoring of that feed that comes in and basically the ability to alert um, nurses and care provider if there is a certain jump in the heartbeat or in, you know any of the other uh, numbers that are coming in compared to the threshold of the normal uh, for someone in for example in their age or, 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 or and so on so um, th there is again there is the aspect of the unlimited things that we can do it for research because this data used to be deleted before mm. nobody uh, could you know afford to, to store this data uh, earlier in an expensive storage. Right now we have all this data uh, for you know as, 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 uh, as long as we want. The, the other piece of it that I would like to highlight is before we used to, if there is a specific alerting feature or server that we wanted to do, they used to hook their cables and their hubs directly to the device itself to be able to get this data out. Sometimes we store it uh, on premises, sometimes we ship it on the cloud. Um, and then they analyze it and provide us with uh, some analytics on it. Uh, but that was not going far because no matter how large or, or scalable the device is, you have four ports, you have eight serial ports, you have a limited number of ports. So uh, we couldn't use that model for long. We had to stop at some point and say, this cannot continue doing this. Let's get this data one time only, get all the data one time only, put it in a centralized place, and then from that, you can use analytics from different uh, vendors, from different providers as much as you want. So it's not only provided the ability to solve the existing uh, problem at hand, but offered us a scalable mm -hmm. uh, solution for the future. Mm -hmm. So uh, as you look to extend access to some of this data to kind of the frontline clinicians and doctors and nurses on the floor, how do you see that evolving? Now, we, we talked a little bit earlier about you know, your researchers are fairly, fairly savvy when it comes to working with True. data. Uh, you know, doctors and nurses generally aren't, are not, uh, don't consider, consider themselves data scientists. So, um, how do you plan on, or do you plan on, uh, extending access to some of this data and analytics to, to them, and, and how will you tackle that issue of um, kind of meeting them where their skill set is? Right, so thankfully the um, electronic medical record systems or suite nowadays are relatively open. Uh, they are not like you know a few years ago, which was very hard to change and customize or add pages to it. So right now, the the EMR that we use currently is relatively open, which allows us to customize the user interface, the middle tier web services to feed data from any source really, not just the Hadoop ecosystem, but any source, uh, which we are currently doing for other purposes. So for example, we have uh, contact information that we feed from our rep di uh, resource directory uh, into the EMR. So while the physician or the nurse inside the EMR, they can look up the contact information of other providers without leaving their EMR like it used to do, like they used to do before. 
So given the same model, which is relatively uh, decoupling or uh, lightly decoupling and at the same time uh, using service-oriented architecture, we'll be able to get the data out of the Hadoop, feed it into the uh, EMR um, transparently for our end users to consume. Mm -hmm. so, so it sounds like, so the EMR uh, application is, is where the doctors and nurses spend the majority of their time when they're interacting, sure. so the idea is to kind of embed that analytics into the environment, rather than having them have to go to a different uh, application or system to, to see the analytics. Exactly, but definitely it's not the only way. Mm -hmm. We also provide them with mobile access. Oh. Not to all of the data, we're still not there mm -hmm. yet, but we definitely want the, 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 the physicians and the care providers to be able, if they wish, if they prefer, um, to they can access it from a mobile device and um, by logging in, they mm -hmm. can uh, get this data uh, as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Mohammed. well listen, thanks very much for stopping by theCUBE and sharing your insights. Uh, good luck with your, your initiatives. I'm very impressed with your uh, forward thinkingness and, uh, and hope to see you around the, uh, the Hadoop shows in the future. Pleasure is mine, thank you. All right, keep it right there everybody. I'll be back after this. This is Dave Vellante. I'm here with Jeff Kelly. John Furrier is also in the house. We'll be back with our next guest. We're live. This is theCUBE from Hadoop Summit 2013. Right back. <laughs>